Hey, it's Joel, the 3D printing nerd, and look what I've got here. I've got a fidget spinner. For those of you that don't know, including me just a few days ago, a fidget spinner is a boredom relief device, and it's a bearing with arms coming off the sides, and they're weighted. So you spin it, I guess, in a fidgety way. There we go. This one was 3D printed on the BCN 3D Sigma R17 using Matterhackers Pro PLA. But what's interesting about this fidget spinner is I designed it in Fusion 360 in just a few minutes. And the print only took 35 minutes for everything. I'm gonna show you how to make this in Fusion 360. So hopefully you can make your own fidget spinner. All right, we're in Fusion 360. The best way to get started is to click up here for the two point rectangle and click this this plane of existence here, drag it out. What I'm gonna do is make it 28 millimeters across. I'm gonna hit tab a few times and then I'm gonna make it 30 millimeters tall. And the reason I do that is because 30 millimeters is what I want between the center point of the middle bearing and the center point of any weight that's on the end of it. And 28 millimeters is how wide I want the arms to be. Let's zoom in a bit. Now that we have that defined, let's hit C for circle. I'm gonna find the center of this line. I'm gonna drag it out and I'm gonna do 28 because this is going to be the outside of the arm and this is going to be the, the circular part of the end. I'm gonna hit C again. I'm gonna drag it out and I'm gonna go 22.05. And the reason I do 22.05 is because the bearing itself is 22 millimeters in diameter. But because of printer settings and calibration things, you. 22 isn't perfect, so I give 0.05 for a little bit of tolerance to let that bearing fit in there. All right, now I need to make one on this side. I'm going to hit C, drag it out, 28. I'm going to hit C. I'm going to drag it out and do 22.05. Enter. That is the crux of everything. That is our sketch within Fusion 360. I'm going to hit the Stop Sketch button right here, and then I'm going to rotate it around. Now we need to extrude this into three-dimensional space. Hit the E key and pick the parts you want to extrude. I want this one, I'm gonna hold down shift. I want that one, that one, this one, and that one. How far into space do we want to extrude it? Uh, the, the bearing itself is seven millimeters deep, so let's do seven. And there it is, we're actually almost done at this point. Now what we wanna do is go to create, pattern, and circular pattern, and this lets us copy things in a pattern in a circular fashion. <laughs> Change pattern type from faces to bodies and click this body right here, it turns blue. As far as the axis, you're going to select here and you're gonna click right here, this end one. That's what it's gonna rotate around. And there we go, look at that. It's giving you a preview of what's gonna happen. Quantity of three, we can, we can change it to two, we can go three. I like the idea of three, so I'm gonna hit okay. Last. We need to go to Modify and Combine. I'm gonna click here, here, here. Join, I'm gonna make sure Join is for the operation and then I'm gonna hit OK. It's one piece and we've just created a fidget spinner. That was easy. Now what about those end caps? Well, on these bearings, you can see there's this inner bearing that rotates and you, you want the cap to rest on that because the rest of it is connected here. So we have to make a, a few little adjustments to our caps. And here's how you do that. Go ahead and click, or I'm sorry, press C. That plane, move it over, draw out a circle. The bearings themselves are 22 millimeters in diameter and I kind of want it to cover the bearing. So let's just do 22. I'm gonna hit C, drag out another circle and that inner bearing itself, the diameter of it, or not the inner bearing, the inner sleeve that holds the bearings in, that is 11 millimeters. So I'm gonna do that. Finally, the inner diameter of that inner sleeve of the bearing, what we need to, uh, let's see, hit C and we need to make it, it's eight millimeters, but we need to allow for uh, the, for it to not just slide, but we want it to kind of stick in there. We need to make it firm in place. And after checking a few things on my printer, I found that 8.15 was the perfect diameter. Let's zoom in a bit. And we're almost done. This is where it gets kind of easy. Well, first, what we want to do, um, the peg itself, we want that peg to stick in a little bit. And 
we need this to stick up a little bit below above. This needs to go in further. This needs to go not as far. And then this needs to be the shortest at all, of all. So we're going to stop the sketch. I'm going to hit E for extrude. Let's rotate this a little bit. I'm going to pick this. 2.5. There we go. This will be the piece that your fingers go on for holding it. Let's see. I got to go over here and I got to turn those back on. I'm going to hit E for extrude. I'm going to go to this one and it needs to be 2.5 plus whatever distance we want above that to be able to interface with the inner sleeve of the bearing. I'm going to say it needs another half of a millimeter. So let's go three. And you can see it kind of puts that little ring around. So this is what's going to touch that bearing inner part. This is what your fingers are going to go on and there's going to be enough space to allow things to spin freely. Finally, the inner part. So it needs to stick about two and a half millimeters above this part to, to kind of interface into the bearing and make it feel right. And if this is three millimeters tall, we add another two and a half to it and that brings us to 5.5 millimeters. And we're done. It really was that simple to, to design this. It's a very simple shape and in Fusion 360, it takes no time at all. And you can also tell with those caps. Remember I said that has that piece on it that rests on the inner sleeve of the bearing? You can tell you, it's silent and so it's not scratching, it's not rubbing, works really good. I have heard from a, a coworker that the ceramic bearings are better for the center because it'll spin for minutes, which is kind of interesting. When you order bearings from Amazon, which is what I've done, they come in this little plastic sleeve and they're a little bit greasy just because they're they're lubricated but you can buy these either one at a time or 10,000 at a time or anywhere in between. I'll put a link down below in the description so if you do actually follow my tutorial you can buy yourself some bearings and make your own fidget spinner. This is cool but I want to change it. These corners are a little bit harsh and I would like to round those corners plus I'd like to round the corners on the places where I put my fingers and my thumb and we can do that in Fusion 360 as well. And we're back in Fusion 360 and again it's an extremely easy operation. Hit F for fillet and we're going to click the edges that we want to apply a fillet to. There's one, there's one and there's the last one. Ah, oh, looks good. Let's see, oh, I'm losing my spot. Here we go. So now I'm going to take this arrow, I'm going to drag it up until those meet. There we go, 3.5 millimeters. I hit okay, and that was it. Now our fidget spinner has a very rounded outer edge, and that's great. Here's our cap, let's, let's fill it that as well. So let's take that, I wonder if 3.5 will work here. It sure does. That's perfect, and the printer should be able to handle that angle no problem. I'm gonna hit okay. All right, now we've done that, let's print it out. The print was easy. Again, this takes like 30 minutes to do. Here's the little caps. Here's the caps right here. Here's the fidget spinner itself. So let's, let's repurpose. Because of the, the tolerance on the printer and uh, the, the way that everything was printed, these caps fit in the bearings very, very well. Now I'm just adding the bearings in the new design. All right, let's test it out. Ooh, that's good. And it's silent. You can't hear it. So the tolerances are good. This, this is a good spinner right here. All right, we're almost done. I do happen to have this sleeve of six bearings left over and I, I am, a, I am a, a collector of incredible high fives. So if we have a center bearing and we maybe have five arms, that would be kind of cool. So I did it. <laughs> yeah, look at that. This is gonna be the high five spinner right here. I've got bearings standing by. Let's load it up. Look at that. Ready? Ooh. That spins good. It's also silent. I don't think you can hear it. Oh, look at that. That's a good fidget spinner right there. All right, let's summarize. Well, I showed you how to make this. In Fusion 360, it took minutes, and the printout was 30 minutes with the end caps, another five minutes, and then you just insert bearings, and you are good to go. You go to Amazon, and you can get fidget spinners for 10 to $20, where you not only designed these and made them yourself, you, 
you saved yourself a little bit of coin. We added a fillet on all the edges and made us a, a new fidget spinner that's a little bit easier to hold and to handle. And I showed you how to do that in Fusion 360 as well. Finally, we got the we got the high five spinner and I didn't exactly show you how to do this in 360, but if you follow the steps and if you look at the spot where I told you to use three for the number of arms, this shouldn't be that much harder for you to make. I know that my skills in Fusion 360 are similar to that of a toddler, but I know my friend Angus over at Maker's Muse is incredibly skilled at Fusion 360. And so Angus, I throw down the gauntlet to you. I challenge you to design a much better fidget spinner using Fusion 360. Wow, it just got dark there. Sorry about that. All right. Hey, you know what? This was fun. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not subscribed. And if you are subscribed, don't forget to ring the bell down there because it'll notify you of when cool stuff like this gets uploaded. A big thanks to my patrons who support me at patreon.com and a big thanks to everybody that lets the commercials play. That really does help out the channel. Finally, don't forget to hug each other more because I love you guys. As always, high five.